Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Sing along. Hey everybody, it's Alex. It is the Ramble and we are here for fun and excitement throughout the evening. Uh, we go until, uh, let's see here, until midnight Eastern, day, uh, Eastern Standard Time. It's not daylight time yet. We'll be again soon. Uh, and uh, we're uh, we're here until uh, then, and we will have our citizens panel a little bit later. I've got something special for you tonight, and um, I want to first of all thank a guy by the name of Art Vuolo. I guess I pronounce that I pr pronounce it correctly, Art Vuolo, uh, Art Vuolo Jr. Right? I like that Vuolo because my nickname when I was a kid was Bolo, so you know. But uh, he, um, he uh, lives in Michigan, and he has had, I, I guess it, it's kind of, you know, how, how we all have kind of like hobbies, and eventually they turn into, into a business. I mean, like, well, this is a business that turned into a hobby, but <laughs> normally, I mean, when I started out in radio, before I ever started out in radio, I was doing pretend radio shows in my bedroom, you know, on a tape recorder. So a lot of us start out uh, uh, doing something as a hobby, and it's so pleasant and wonderful when that hobby can also turn into your pastime and your profession. Uh, and Art Buolo uh, did, has been doing something over the years, and to show you how far back it goes, the first time I encountered him was in 1982 uh, in San Francisco, and uh, he uh, he got a hold of me and said, do you mind if I come in and videotape you doing your radio show? So I, you know, said, sure, great, you know, just let me have a copy of it or whatever, and you can come in and do it. And he came in and did it. And uh, he, that was part of what he was doing. He was going all around the country uh, recording people, radio people, doing their radio shows. And he has a library that is so extensive now that the um, uh, Radio Broadcasters Hall of Fame, to which I have never even been asked to be part of, in spite of my stunning career, uh, is uh, going to take his tapes and make them as uh, part of a, a thing and put it on their on their website, literally, so you can see all these people uh, doing their um, doing their radio shows. Uh, and he, I guess he's got hundreds of them. Maybe it's Art, if you're listening, it's probably thousands, I would imagine, of, of just about everybody imaginable. And the next time I encountered Art was in um, 1991. And uh, he uh, recorded me as I was doing a live show. Now, let me say that Art then got a hold of me recently, many, many, many years later, and says, I, you know, I have a couple of tapes of you. And I said, really? I said, I would love to see them. He says, well, I'll get them to you. And we went back and forth about when the dates were on these uh, various things. And finally, the other day in the mail, sure enough, here come two, video two, two files of uh, videos that I had done, that he had done with me. Uh, one of them was uh, the one in um, 1982. Uh, uh, Oh, uh, or was it, it had to be, yeah, it had to be 82, I think, yes, in 1982, and um, that was of me at the Quake, station called the Quake. Uh, I then subsequently went to Live 105, and about nine years later, Art showed back up and said, can I record your show? And we were doing a show from the Marriott Hotel, from the, uh, not the lobby, but there was like an atrium or whatever, at, at this hotel, at the Marriott Hotel in San Francisco, and we were doing one of our live broadcasts. And uh, because the NAB was in town, the National Association of Bombastic Broadcasters, and um, he recorded that. And the second file was of that. And what was on it just made my jaw drop. I played the thing for Girlfriend and she just went, this is, this is gold. 
And what it was was me doing my live show. Now, there was a whole segment of me doing my letter segment, which we're not going to bore you with right now. Uh, but what also was on that show was, to begin with, a guy who we just absolutely loved. And in this video, you will see his true brilliance. And his name was, of course, uh, was, of course, uh, was Kevin Meany. Kevin has since uh, passed away uh, and uh, uh, died about what, last year. Uh, and, but you can see him in all his glory. And another guy by the name of David Feldman, who has uh, risen to lesser fame, uh, but is still, you know, and you can see in those days how brilliant he was, how absolutely brilliant he was. And our guest, Larry King. Now, you know, the hardest thing you can do as a broadcaster and as an interviewer is if you're an interviewer, to interview an interviewer. <laughs> but I did it, and it what turned out was so phenomenal. I wrote Art, and I said, do you mind if I play this thing on the air? And he said, I would be, I would be uh, honored if you did so. So I dedicate this to you, Art Vuolo, and... Uh, here, let's go back to 1991 to a much younger Alex Bennett and a much, much younger Larry King. Bennett, we're here at the Marriott Hotel doing a little road show, and it's a live studio audience. And at the National Association of Bottom Feeders. Uh, gosh, you've been a good audience this morning. And this is a strange, this is a strange room, isn't it, Kevin? Kevin uh, Meany, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, it's weird. It's definitely weird. That fabulous Meany family, America's lovable TV family. That's right. And doing who's the off the air forever and ever? <laughs> it's Uncle Kevin, Buck. Kevin Meany. But who, who, uh, uh, you, you have an HBO special. HBO special coming up October nineteenth on on HBO, HBO ten thirty p.m. That's what spot on the dial. I don't know what channel would be here. People ask you that, but I, I can't tell you. Oh. It's twenty two. Could you where come I over to my place and tune it in for me? Uh, sure. Okay, good. And Jeff Cesario, <laughs> Jeff Cesario, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank you very oh, by much. By the way, Kevin's at the other. Jeff Cesario, Tommy T's in, uh, in San, San Ramon. San Ramon. David Feldman, largely unemployable. You can catch me on every after-minimum cable TV show. You know, it's amazing. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing who you meet at this convention because already today, passing by me, is the guy uh, who fired me at, w, at, at this radio station originally. And then another guy who fired me at WIOD in Miami. So that, that. Alex, I got some news feel, for you. Don't, don't boo him. He still has to live in Miami, okay? I think that's. Alex, we're going for the hat trick. <laughs> then, all of a sudden, like, it's some kind of flashback in my life. A guy comes up to me and says, hi, hello, you remember me? And it was Bruce Williams, who's on uh, the NBC network. And, uh. The reason I remember it is because we worked together at WMCA in New York, and a few years ago I went back to WMCA in New York, and there was this picture that was taken of all the people at WMCA in New York. And it was like uh, me and Sally Jesse Raphael and Bruce Williams, and they had put me on the periphery of the picture. And I looked at all the other people who were on the periphery of the picture and said, I bet we're going to be fired in two weeks. And sure enough, two weeks later, we were out. One other person was in that picture, and here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Larry King. Good morning. Thank you. Do you? Uh, Thank you. Do you remember that? Do you remember that picture? No. We were all standing there with telephones in our hands. No. <laughs> but I, 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 I'll answer any other question. But that. But it was amazing. You, Sally, Jesse, Raphael. I remember Bruce we, when when we started on Mutual in '78. Our first New York outlet was WMCA, but it was so uh, brief because we went over to WOR and about. Six months, I think we were on MCA six months, maybe a year. Yeah. And then we were on OR all those years. But I, I remember that, I don't remember posing for pictures with well, the phone. Well, they put me on the periphery. Everybody on the periphery was out in two weeks. What time of day were you on? I was on, actually at that point, I had, uh, it was very strange. I was doing a show, uh, uh, I was doing the afternoons there. And uh, then Barry Farber lost the election. He was a for mayor. local talk show host for mayor and needed a station. So they fired me and hired him. And I told everybody they should have voted for him, you know. Uh, <laughs> and I lost my job. Whereas if he were mayor, so, you'd still be in New yeah, York. So by the time you saw me, I was doing part times there. Well, this my uh, you. You belong here, Alex. It's this a strange city, and you belong. 
Also, this is uh, what you're trying to say. Also, my, only my this favorite is, city. Uh, oh, this oh. is. Uh, you know, I tell that to everybody. You go around the world and you travel a lot. And with CNN, we're all over the world. And people always ask, where if you could live one place, where would you live? That you're not living now, and it would be San Francisco. Oh, this is just, you know, oh that's right. Just suck up yeah, to them right you now, kiss Larry. A little more suck, up yeah. suck up to who? I resent that. I'm so, who's here? <laughs> the mayor is here. I, Herb Kane is here. Who am I sucking up to? I love San. This is this is a special. See, I think when you spend a lot of time here, you don't realize it, how special it is, until you go other places. Like uh, most Miami. other places look alike. You know, I feel exactly the same way. I don't live here, but if I uh, could move back, I would. I love yeah. this city. Great all right, town, all right. If I, well, I, all right, I feel the same way. Uh -huh. It's a great town. You don't feel the same, do you? I would like to move out of here as quickly as possible. <laughs> I, I think it's a backwater town. It's what, the sixth, seventh largest market? Eighth and fifth. 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 I just feel like an amateur living here. I just really? don't feel I'm good enough to make it in New York or L.A., so that's why I hide here. And I think the people are stupid here, too, as a matter of fact. <laughs> no, you think it's a no-count city? I just think, like, it's, it's just nothing, zero. Why don't you try Des Moines? I think it's inbred. I think the only reason I'm, like, making any money in this town is because the people just have, don't have a clue. So, <laughs> Welcome to San Francisco, Larry. <laughs> try being Jewish. <laughs> He is. You're Jewish too? Uh, yeah. Well, and Pittsburgh's a good town. <laughs> I wanna, you know, uh, uh, I was thinking a minute ago that, uh, like, I'm very shy. When people are going to be on the show, I don't like to talk to them ahead of time. I never do. You, you're the same way. I was going to ask you that. I mean, I never plan and I never talk. I, I mean, the guests on television, they sit down about. We go on at nine, they sit down about two minutes to nine, and radio about two minutes before going on. I don't even like my producer to sit them down before I actually start talking. Because I don't want to, it, it's funny, but I feel that if, you, if, I, if I say hello to them, I'm, I'm breaking some kind of... Well, I, I'll, I'll casually audience. say hello, and a lot of times you know the guests. I mean, if it's a senator and you've seen him at lunch that day, and then you're sitting there with him, you'll... But I will never talk, ever, about what I'm going to talk about on the air. Yeah. Whereas I would never, if, if, I would, if I were on tonight and I'm talking about uh, Clarence Thomas, I would not ask the guest before we go on what he thinks. And I have no idea what I'm going to ask the guest as I'm introducing the guest. I, I, I've always worked that way for 30 years, is that as I'm saying uh, my guest is Alex Bennett, I don't know what the question is. And then something happens. That's pretty much the way I work. I Some kind of been. chemistry happens. and that, It's not a lesson. If I was speaking at schools, I wouldn't say this is the way to do interviews. But you have to do what's best for you. You have to do what's most comfortable to you, and that's probably true in any business, but certainly in broadcasting. Whatever you feel the best about is the best. You can't be someone else. I work off the top. You like working off the top? Well, I, always, off the I top. always work off the top of my head, and I, uh, uh, more, uh, because, mainly it because shows. I don't think that there's any... <laughs> It was a cheap ball joke, I'm sorry. It's a great conversation, just talking about, you know, not planning anything and just... <laughs> yeah. no, we uh, bust our tails with jokes and stuff. You guys walk in and say they don't think of nothing. No, I never, I never prepare questions because I figure you're getting into a conversation. And then well, if, if you are curious, you're going to be a good interviewer. Yeah, the, 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 whole, the whole secret is curiosity and ability to listen. Yeah. You got to listen because especially if you work that way, uh, you better listen because if you if you run into opportunities with interviewers who don't listen and I've run into a lot of them You can have a lot of laughs. I, I was on a show in Dallas once called uh, This is a true story interviewers who don't listen. I was on a show called good morning what, Dallas What would you say Larry? What? Oh, sorry. Good mo close your eyes. Okay picture good morning Dallas now picture the host and the co-hostess You're right you're right. You got him down pat. And the, the blonde lady was interviewing me. And she had five pre-printed questions that she was going to ask. And she was going to ask those five questions no matter what I said. And when I was on, she'd look at the monitor. And if the camera was on me, she would fix her lipstick. She would do her makeup. She just didn't pay attention at all. She just asked questions, and I answered them. And the third question was like, what makes a good talk show host? And then she would go back to doing her makeup. And so uh, the cameramen were in to me, and I was into them, and the director and everything, and we knew that this was an airhead who had no concept, and uh, was not listening at all. So she asked me, what makes a good talk show host? I said, in my case, being employed by the CIA is a big help because uh, they, they get me guests, and I give clues, and these clues are heard by agents around the world, and then they can blow up munitions dumps. And then her next question was, are you married? <laughs> That's the non-listening host. 
so you got this whole theory about how to, uh, how, to, how to run an interview. Have you ever had it go wrong on you? Well, there's no perfect interview. You know, you do the best you can. You ask the best questions you can. You listen the best. Your job is to bring, elicit the most you can out of a guest. I, I don't use the word I when I interview people. I is irrelevant. There's no place in the interview, mm. I don't think. My opinion of your movie is immaterial. It's your movie that counts. The guest counts. Sure, you can goof. I, I, had a, I did a whole two hours once with the president of uh, Apple Computer, and uh, we talked about the founding of Apple and how he got to be president, and I never asked him. He got hired by the, the original founder and fired the guy who hired him. He wound up being Scully. president of the company, Scully, and fired Jobs. <laughs> I never found that out till the last phone call. Ask why I didn't ask that, and that never came up. Sure, you're gonna you're gonna miss things. That jumps out in my mind. No one's ever done the perfect interview, but I love. I think the first thing is to love it. I love the exchange. See, like right now, I'd yeah. like to be asking questions of everybody here. I would like to do a show where the the curtain opens, and that's where we all learn the guest. I don't care to know the guest. I'm, I'm exactly the same way. No, I like exactly that. The same way. Uh, uh, but you uh, guys are very much alike. <laughs> I'm out for his job. Mm -hmm. Don't tell him that. Okay. Anyway, now, uh, uh, but the, the uh, who, you know, I'm not saying that, I don't want to put you on the spot on this one, but the fact is that some people, no matter how nice they are, no matter how decent they are, sometimes they're just terrible interviews. Yeah, well, they're then really you, terrible. they are. So some I'm, people are not. I've got to ask you who's the worst. Most, well, most people who go on, on shows are pretty good. If you're going on CNN tonight, on a show that's going to be in 102 countries around the world, you're probably a pretty good guest. The producers have talked to you. They know that you certainly know the subject pretty well. I mean, they can't make you fiery if you're not fiery. You want four good things in a guest. You want passion. You want a sense of humor. You want an ability to self-deprecate yourself. You want an ability to place the person listening in the person on the air shoes. Put you on. Sinatra's the greatest guest there is. He embodies all those things. I've done him a lot. Every time he comes on, he's three. It's hard to get, but he fits all those things. Now, the classic is the guy who doesn't. The one-word answer. The person who doesn't want to be there. I had a terrible time with Damon Wilson of Sanford and Son. I have a tough time with Robert Mitchum. Mitchum is a guy who gives you one word answers and, and makes everything so simple that he won't think in the abstract. And if they won't think in the abstract, then they won't take you beyond what you ask them. So if you ask Robert Mitchum, explain your concept, how you, how you view a role. You're going to take this job, how do you view it? He said, I read it, learn it, do it. <laughs> I said, that's it, that's it. What about working for John Huston? He was fine. Uh, compare yeah, directors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just do what they say. See, then I, after a while, you don't know if he's putting you on. I, was I asked him what he thought of Al Pacino. He said, I've never seen his work. What do you think of Robert De Niro? Don't know him. <laughs> now, <laughs> after a while, you got no, 48 questions there. But yeah. sometimes you can take a guess, it's a true story, take a bad guess and make him good. And that's when you feel good. And it's like a comic. When you go on stage, I do a lot of speaking around the country and I like to work comedically, so I, I tell stories. And sometimes you'll go up and it's not working that night. Nothing can always work every night. And the greatest kick to the comic is to have it start bad and then win them over. Have a bad first five minutes and then by the end have them cracking up and then you feel you've accomplished something. And with an interview, I had a guy on once in Miami at WIOD That's in those studios. There's an organization called the Aces. Aces are people who shoot down five enemy planes. If you shoot down five enemy planes in a war, you're an ace. It started in the United States, but now it's international. There are North Vietnamese aces, Soviet aces, German aces, and they're a social organization. They meet, and they have an international convention, and they shop talk. They talk about war, and they're all fighter pilots. They're all individualists. They've all fought against each other. Many times they'll meet, and they find they were in the same battle against each other. They're a really extraordinary organization. You have to shot down five enemy planes. In one year, the aces had a convention in Miami. And we happen to have an ace living in Miami. And the Miami Herald found this guy, and they brought him, and they asked him if they were doing a feature on him. They're following me around. He comes to my radio show. And I was on from 9 to midnight, and he was the last guest from 11 to 12. We didn't take any phone calls. I just did interviews. I didn't like phone calls. I like long interviews. So he would come into the, he comes into the studio. This is an ace. He shot down 11 German planes in World War II. I shake hands with him, and his hands are sweating. I said to him, hi, and he goes, hi. And he sits down, I know I'm in trouble. His mouth is dry, this guy is scared. So my first question to him was, uh, why did you enlist, why did you choose the Army Air Corps? He says, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I said, what do you like about flying? It's nice. 
Now, I'm three minutes into the show, and I'm out of questions. The guy is totally panicked. There's nothing left to ask him. He's told, and this is an ace. So what I did at that moment was, I went to the moment, and I said to him, are you nervous? And he said he was, and I asked why, and he said because he didn't know who was listening. He had a fear because he was on the radio and he had no idea who was listening. I said, do you mean to tell me if there were a plane in the back of this station and enemy planes came overhead, you would not be afraid to take that plane up and go fight them? He said, not at all. But you're afraid of this, afraid of not, I said, I'm afraid, I would be afraid to go fight. And what happened was we took the talk from being an ace to fear. We started talking about fear. And in 20 minutes, I created a monster. 20 minutes after 11, this guy is doing things like, we dove out of the sky <laughs> at 4,000 feet. Through the clouds, the sun burst. I could see the edge of the airplane gleaming off the side of their tongues. I saw the fierceness of their... By 12 o'clock, they had to carry this guy out of the station. I made him show business. Can you stick around a little more? Yeah. Larry King's with us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Alex Bennett, and this is a live studio audience here at the Marriott. In San Francisco, here at the National Association of Broad Broadcasters Convention, Kevin Meany is with us, Jeff Cesario, David Feldman, and Larry King is here as well. Uh, you know what I gotta say is difficult? Interviewing an interviewer. Sure, because they do the same profession you do. That's why a lot of people think, boy, if I'm gonna have a good convention, if I've got doctors, I'll get a doctor to interview them. That'd be the worst, because a doctor ain't gonna be curious. Yeah. The thing that makes an interviewer good is that he or she is curious about a whole body of things. And one of the things you're not curious about is interviewing. It's exactly what we're talking about now. You're not curious yeah. about radio because you know radio. So you're not going to ask questions about radio style because you know radio yeah. style. That's why often if you see sports events and uh, Sandy Koufax quit doing baseball because he once was on with, with uh, Bob Gibson and he found himself... Bob Gibson had just pitched a no-hitter, and Koufax was explaining to Gibson what Gibson did. Yeah. He wasn't asking questions because he wasn't curious. So that's why it's hard. Now, you're a big sports maven. Big. And I it, love it, sports. Did you always want to basically do sports? I thought I wanted sports? to be a baseball broadcaster. I, 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 would, I wanted to be Red Barber. I was a kid, and I used to listen to Red Barber and Russ Hodges, who later came out So here. where did it go wrong? I mean, what, what's... I went like, to Miami, and I started, and I went thought... went to I, Miami. Yeah. I was in... I love Miami. I spent 20 years in Miami. I started in Miami, and I... My first day on the air was in Miami, and I thought I'd be a sportscaster, and then I got a show like this. It was at Pumpernick's Restaurant. I was doing a morning show, and the owner of Pumpernick's, Charlie Bookbinder, liked me, and he liked my style, and he said, would you like to do an interview show in our restaurant every morning? And it had no producer, and so I had no training to interview guests. We had no guests booked. I would take people right out of the audience, and authors started coming in, and that show caught on, and Bobby Darren came in, Jimmy Hoffa, Ed Sullivan, Danny Thomas. They just dropped in. They were never booked. It became a coffee clutch scene, and the Miami Herald did write-ups on it, and it caught on. I got television almost immediately. I got a, a nightly television show, and I was doing both, and I've done both all my career, and I knew early on that that's what, that was a niche. If you can interview well, you have a special niche. There's a lot more sportscasters than interviewers, but and I liked point, it. At some point in that career, it fell apart. In 1970. One, I, 72, I lost both jobs. I had outspent myself. I was forced into bankruptcy. I was living on an ego trip. And then I uh, did some writing and came back on the air in 75. And then in 77, Mutual had this idea for a national radio talk show, which no one thought could work. In fact, I even doubted if it could work. But I moved to Washington, and that show caught on. It was, it was the right time, because AM radio was in trouble. AM was starting to fade. Yeah. FM was coming up, and AM stations we're starting to scrounge and look for things to do and talk was one of the things that AM can do better than FM. Do you think a down period made you appreciate what you got now? Oh yeah. The best, the best thing that ever happened to me was losing work makes you appreciate work. For example, the best thing that ever happened to me in my life was having a heart attack early. I had a heart attack in 87. Well, I Some people have all the luck. <laughs> yeah, I gotta try it. <laughs> well, it got me to stop smoking, lose 30 pounds, be conscious of what I eat be weight conscious. I just passed an insurance physical that shows I didn't, didn't even have a heart attack. So that, you know, so sometimes you can make adversity terrific. You can make adversity work for you if you use it. In other words, if you take the down yeah. period and make it up. In fact, everyone I've pretty much known has had major down periods. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And absolutely. The, the down period helps you when you're, you don't learn anything when you win. You learn a lot when you lose. So Don Shula told me once, he's really right. 
I, I, I've had a theory during my life is you hang out with losers. And you learn about losing. That's why I hang out with Feldman, for instance, as an example. Well, guys who lose a lot tend to drift together. Jack Parr told me once, you know, people, he'll walk into a restaurant and there'll be six or seven television hosts sitting in the corner saying, who is he? They're losers. <laughs> you know, if you're sitting worried about guys who make it, and there are a lot of people in the radio business yeah. who have a losing mentality. There's something about radio. I don't know what it is, yeah. but there's a lot of guys, no, they really, they sit around and they just get up in the morning depressed. They're going to hate the general manager before they meet the general manager. See, who they, would that be? <laughs> <laughs> Who would we know on this dais? I'm as happy as I've ever been, damn it. Have you had that kind of life, Alan? I think for a while, yeah, but not now. You're I love my now. general manager. You love your general <laughs> well, manager? Wait a minute, this is San Francisco. I have to ask that twice. He's been You tested. love your general manager. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, he, no, I, 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 like, I like, love the job. I love this audience. This is, this is, oh, this is the young, best part vibrant. Of it right this is a here. vibrant, great audience. Yeah. I owe everything I have today to them, and I'm going to get even with them for it sometime. Also, a lot of nice ladies here. Oh yes, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. There are there are rewards to this job, huh, Alex? Uh, it's a nice job. I got into it for the records and the women, and I got a real nice record collection now, and I'm happy to have it. So Why do these comics stare at you with such admiration? Do you really worship Alex? Is I'm exhausted. No, we're just, we're out. <laughs> I, got, I did a set morning. at 545 this morning, Larry. So I opened guys, the show. These guys are your fans. No, we're afraid of them. <laughs> I'm the king of comedy here in this town. Larry, great. I got to go, guys. Glad thank you, you very much down. for Larry doing Larry King, ladies and gentlemen. Alex. Thank you, Larry. We'll be right back. Are we on the air? It's sort of like the heart. I'm Alex Ben. This is a live studio audience right here at the Marriott Hotel in downtown San Francisco here at the National Association of Broadcasting Convention. Kevin Meany, television's lovable Uncle Buck. Thank you. Who's Cancel. off the air forever? Cancel. But does have an HBO special coming up uh, next month, this October month. October 19th. October 19th, called Kevin Meany. Get that puss off your face special. And uh, next to him, Jeff Cesario, I'm actually a, a failed yeah. pilot at CBS. I'm actually television's lovable Uncle Tanutes, would be my... <laughs> and he's out oh, of... Oh, so you know Danny Thomas. Yeah, You're correct. at the other uh -huh. cafe. Hey, uh, How about that glass coffee... Uh, top uh, table. Is You're, that true? I just hope we use coasters. Is Kevin, I talk somebody words for, yeah. I'm at Tommy T's, yeah. NBC Kevin, special is holiday. In San Ramon, you are at the, the other cafe. Feldman my, isn't working. I told my mother about the glass top coffee table. She said, well, I hope we use coasters. <laughs> <laughs> nobody gets that because nobody knows what we're talking about. Well, Danny would like to uh, get a... I, I don't really don't want to say you, it. You don't want to stick around for our, our reviews. No. Because you always argue with... I always argue with this man. I appreciate discourse mm -hmm. so please stick around okay all right i will then ladies and gentlemen who are you going to review today we'll here with see. our movie reviews uh -huh. is michael snyder uh -huh. yeah good morning the entertainment oh that's report, your name the entertainment michael report snyder. Is brought to you by the punchlines here in san francisco uh -huh. and in one oh let me just ask you one question are you uh, before the plug or after are you the hyping plug? the punchline did you did you ever they, they put did time. you ever put down acts from the punchline? Why certainly I'll do that today. No, you like. don't. I try. All right, go ahead. All right. Go ahead, go ahead. Brought to you by the punchline here in San Francisco, where you can see Kip Adada, James Wesley Jackson, and Shyama, and out in Walnut Creek, Don McMillan, Alex Reed, and Greg Burrant. And I got to tell you, folks, if I seem a little groggy, I've been partying all night with Bowie, and uh, it's been a rocking good time here at the convention. Uh, smoking the crack pipe? Oh, uh, have you been? God. A lot of crack smoking here you know, at the NAB convention. You know, as a matter of fact, convention. Iman does all the, uh, the copping. She does the copping, and David does all the smoking. And it's a groovy thing. It's a beautiful thing. Take anyway. The cop and, uh, this is what happens when you reach and, the top. And Bowie smokes the crack. It's a beautiful thing. Uh -huh. He said uh, it. I'm just... Uh, no, I... David, he's a great guy. Just kidding, Dave. Um, Barton Fink opens today. Uh, have you seen this thing yet, Kevin, down south? In La La uh, Land? No, the movies no are I haven't seen it, no. Life is Easy. Totally cool, totally bizarre film. The Coen Brothers, the guy that did, um, they did Blood Simple, Raising Arizona, and Miller's Crossing. And this is all about a, uh, a playwright in New York during the 40s, played by John Turturro, who is great, really tremendous. And he um, decides to break down and go to Hollywood, make some money, write a few scripts. And it's like the nightmare that happens to him, the living nightmare that happens to him in LA. John Goodman is in this thing from Roseanne and, and other 
uh, well-known work, and he is great. Best performance I've ever seen him give on screen. John Goodman plays uh, a traveling salesman, lives next door to, to the playwright as he's trying to break through his mental block. I would suggest, you know, if you're into this sort of... Uh, so it's the, it's, the, it's the feel-good hit of the fall? Not quite, no. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the feel-demented hit of the fall, okay. actually. So uh, I would recommend it highly. It's a wait in line for me, my kind of movie. Barton Fink. And, um, you That's know, uh, I would also suggest that uh, <laughs> Freddy's Dead. Promises, promises. The final nightmare. They told us that, but I, I really I have a hard time believing it. They wouldn't let us see Freddy's Dead, the final nightmare. So it really doesn't matter then? No, not say. particularly. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll check it out. Maybe a bargain matinee for you Freddy fans. Robert Englund is back. Maybe for the last time? Maybe not. I don't know. And um, for you uh, foreign film lovers, the story of boys and girls, um, directed by Pupi Avati. Pupi Avati. Pupi Avati. That's I not don't. a name you want to associate. Let's bring him on out here. Pupi Avati. <laughs> I Stand up, Pupi. I don't miss a Pupi Avati film. I don't know about you guys. Not a, not a bad movie. Yeah. Topo Set Pupi. in 30s Italy. You know, period piece about a, a marriage about to happen between a rich guy and, and a poor girl. Or uh, maybe a rich girl and a, and a poor guy. I, I can't remember. It was Julia Italian. Robertson it was Italian. I don't remember. What do you got in video, bud? Uh, in video, the only thing I'm going to recommend, I number 246. Right? We're, uh, we're on fourth, our... A limited edition, 4,000. Tenter hooks. worth money someday. Each sleeve has the uh, Star Trek um, uh -huh. insignia on the little uh, uh, protective cover. It's a little the 25th booklet. anniversary Trek box. 149 bucks. Oh, man. 100 bucks if you buy it on videotape. But you it's know, all five movies. $30 go... To Leonard Nimoy's ears. They actually now have residuals. The ears themselves do. Um, what have you seen lately you like, Kevin? I'm curious. Have you seen any movie? Uh, like? Michael, I'm not part of this uh, little presentation that you're doing here. I'm, I'm bringing you, you into know. it, babe. I don't want to be brought into it. I okay. don't want to be a part of your little game here. My little game. You know? Wow, I sense but hostility. I, but I, I really hope uh, that things work out for you and maybe sometime uh, you'll move on and be a member of the Regis and Kathy Lee team. <laughs> if I'm really lucky. Because I think you'd really work with them well. Do you know those guys? Mm -hmm. Have you cohabited with Regis and Kathy Lee? Uh, did you ever do their show? Yes, I have. Because I did their show. Yeah. Is it true? Follow me on this one. Mm -hmm. Sure. Agree with me. Before the show, she comes into the green room with the baby, with Cody, mm -hmm. and tries to sell it for whiskey. Am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> that's true. Wow. I heard that's true. Mm -hmm. Well, if Michael agrees with you, I can't agree with you. <laughs> we'll be right back. Give you the good stuff in the last five minutes. This, I was on, T, I did have a TV show. This is what I'm left with, this thing here. 19. You know, 18. Kevin, they uh, canceled Alex's TV show and erased the final episode, so there's no way it can end up in the Museum of Broadcasting. What was uh, the name of that TV show? Here's Alex. <laughs> oh, really? I never forget that final episode. We all kind of glommed onto one another and hugged each other, like yeah, yeah, Sue Ann yeah, and Ted, and yeah. he cried and said, "I oh. cherish you, people." We're talking about the last Alex Bennett show on KSU, and nobody has it on tape. No. Let me just mention because we give him five free plugs for listening to our radio station at Burlingame Cycle at 1111 Burlingame Avenue, the largest Klein dealer. How's your Klein? Mm -hmm. On the peninsula, they're offering the rock shocks installed on any yes on any new bike for 275. You think I'm going to do a commercial off the air? I didn't know what you were doing. 1992 bikes are arriving, so we can make room for all the 99. So we can make room. All the 1991 bikes are priced to blow out, <laughs> including uh, including Trek, Bianchi, and and Giant. And uh, trade-ins are always welcome. And uh, this week, say Alex Bennett can't ride a bike and get a free T-shirt with any purchase. That's that's Bur Burley Game Cyclery, our latest merchant of the week. Just for listening at work to Live 105. Wow. You've got a career. Are you ta you're taking a special down the hall and have to leave us at this time, don't you? Yes, I do have to leave. <laughs> and um, Special down the hall. I'm doing a special down the hall. Oh, yes. you are not. I'm actually doing the Rush Limbaugh show. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about our weight problems. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Meany. Thank you very much, everybody. You guys have been fantastic. I'll be at the other cafe through Sunday night. Sunday night. 8.30 Do tonight. not miss him. And uh, don't miss the uh, October 19th, the HBO special. Great. Get that puss off your face. <laughs> Kevin Meany, once again. Good night, everybody. Good day. Good day. <laughs> once again, Kevin Meany, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. 
quickly. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Here, let me open up the mic and let me also try and. Oh, I, I pushed the wrong button. That's what I did. Here we go. Hi. How are you? Sorry, we're running a little longer than usual with the video portion of the show. The uh, but I th I think uh, I wanted I I didn't really want to wa run uh, the Michael Snyder's reviews because they haven't changed in uh, twenty years, thirty years. But um, I wanted to play it because Meanie so hated Michael that every time Michael was on with Meanie, it was gold. And as you saw, Meanie didn't let him get away with anything. And uh, there was David Feldman there and Jeff Cesario and the great uh, Larry King uh, when we were both pups, okay, and uh, not kids any longer. Anyway, look, I want to uh, let's open up the lines, okay, and let's talk to the people out there. Uh, and, and maybe one other day we'll play the other uh, the other disc. But thank you to Art Vuolo, by the way. I just re I hope and I hope I'm pronouncing the name right, Art, because uh, I hate it when people pronounce my name wrong. They call, yeah, some people do. They say Alex Benet. Okay, so you know. Anyway, uh, our number, if you want to call us, it's a Skype number. Is a Gabnet Live. If you don't know how to get a hold of us, you don't know how to get Skype, you don't know how to do the whole thing, just go over to gabnet.net, and you can, on the right-hand side of the page, all the information you'll need to know, including a number you can use just on your regular telephone to call us. There's also a convenient uh, click button you can click on that will just dial your, uh, your Skype right into us, okay? It's very simple. The whole thing is, is amazingly simple. Uh, so uh, do that. Uh, and while you're over there, don't worry that you're going to miss any of the show because it's playing over there right now. Uh, the video is playing over there right now. So, uh, you know. Anyway, our lines are open. And now here's the point where I wait for people to call. Half the problem is, is that when I open up the lines and then I say the lines are now open, there's a problem with that. Well, what's the problem, Alex? The problem is that it's about uh, 45 seconds before anybody hears me say the lines are open. So all those people who would be calling, like tonight is a it's a fill-free night. I just remembered. That means I might have to play the Larry King interview over again. Uh, anyway, so it's a fill-free night, so feel free to call. Uh, you know, for those people, there's a lot of people who, who hate Phil and uh, say, oh, I can't listen to that show because I can't stand Phil. And I go, Phil is important to this show because he pre brings to this show an alternative opinion. You may hate that opinion, but he brings uh, variety to the show. I would hate to have a show where everybody agreed with the host. That's also why I like Patrick. Patrick is a, is a Republican. Uh, but not, unlike uh, um, our friend uh, Phil, uh, he's a Republican who, quite frankly, is uh, is, is very uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, very reasonable as a Republican. Anyway, I may fall asleep tonight because tonight I'm trying tea. Why am I trying tea? Because I um, um, uh, the coffee keeps me awake. And I want to see if I can go to sleep tonight without taking a Xanax to put me to sleep. Anyway, um, we, uh, oh, here comes Jeff Stein. Okay, so we got we got somebody calling. There we go. There is uh, there is Jeff Stein. Let me uh, let me put his picture up there. Hello there, Jeffrey. How are you doing? How are you? Uh, yeah, we're uh, this is a fill hey, fill free night tonight. So I don't hate so. You know, I, I don't hate Phil. I like Phil. Phil's an old friend, you know. I mean, I disagree with him. I think he's full of shit. Oh, he's great to argue with. He, he, well, he no, he's not great. I'll tell you, in some ways, he's not great to argue with. And I'll tell you why. Because he's so out there that, you know, it, it's it's like shooting fish in a fucking barrel. Yeah. You know, uh, if, if he were like, I, I mean, I've known right wingers that I've interviewed who are just really bright, you know. And, and sharp that I've had a hard time with, you know, but Phil's not one of them. So whatever. 
So our lines are open and people can call us if they so desire. Guess what? I made the calls today. I've, I got my Cialis. Go, complete. Yeah, I'm, I got my Cialis. Let me explain it here. First, let me put on John uh, Perulis, who is calling in. Hello, John. There we go. He's turning his cameras going on. There we go. Let me explain something to Jeff. Jeff, a second. So, uh, in case people don't know, I was I was having trouble getting Cialis, be and I don't need it for a hard on. Like, can I, I? Why do I preface it that way? I need it for. It's be okay if you do. It's I need okay. it for benign prostate hypoplasia, but the fact that I walk around with a heart on all day is kind of a nice side effect. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyway. Uh, so the other night, Jeff comes on. I'm having, I was having trouble getting. I got it with a new, uh, new plan, right? So I was having trouble getting the Cialis because it, 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 the, the company, the, uh, you know, the my drug company or whatever, my ph pharmacy, my people, my drug plan that I got under SAG after now, um, didn't want to give it to me. Uh, but they, they, you know, I needed to get prior. What's it called? Prior. Uh, Prior approval. Prior approval. So my doctor writes a note, sends it to SAG. Today I call SAG, and they say to me, you got it. Go down and pick it up. You got prior approval on it. Because what they wanted to do was charge me $1,100, Yeah. right, for the drug. And I'm sorry, I, I don't have $1,100 a month to put out or for three months' worth to put out. So... I call up the uh, Walgreens and I say, how much is it going to cost? And they say, well, it says $1,100 here. I said, Just call in and ask them about it. And they, sure enough, I had gotten the, the approval. And they said $125 for a three-month supply. Yeah. Now, I was paying $75 for a one-month supply before. So this is what I'm, I'm saving. Now, what I'm saving more is on, on each drug, they put how much you're saving over what the drug costs. Okay, the three month supply would cost. It says your your pharmacy plan just saved you. Hold on, folks, thirteen hundred and seventy seven dollars. Wow. Whoa. Are they charging that much for a hard on pill? Jeez, Almighty. They're full of shit. I know they're full of shit. And then you talk about this guy. Remember this guy who raised the drug prices on the AIDS drug? Yes. I Scarelli, not, Scarelli. He, Scarelli is like, they're like Scarelli. There's no difference between the drug companies and Scarelli. And if they could do it, they'd do it too. You know, I mean, come on. You're telling me that a pill that gives guys hard-ons is worth $500 a month? You're only charging that because there are guys who don't get hard-ons and they're, they, they, they want us uh, uh, to solve the problem. So, I mean, I, but, uh, Anyway, I get it for one hundred twenty-five dollars for three months, so it comes down to forty-one dollars. Forty-one dollars for for a drug I used to pay seventy-five a month for, and, and so all my drugs combined, all of them, come to like a hundred. Uh, what, what is it? Uh, 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 Two hundred twenty-seven dollars for three months, or about sixty-six dollars a month. Pretty good, huh? I'm with a good union. Uh, good deal. Hi, Tom. Hi. How you doing? Fine. I called to to comment about your uh, your breakfast with Bennett. Oh, oh, that. Uh, yes. I really like that. I, I I just got in late and I turned on it in progress and uh, while well, well, Larry King was on yeah. and uh, I uh, just wanted to let you know. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Michael Snyder's movie reviews, you were able to find out exactly the date of that show. Exactly. Uh, Barton Fink premiered on August 21st, 1991. August 1st, 1991. August 21st. 21st. Okay, so that was August 21st. 1991. Now, here's the thing. You know the, 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 the thing with um, uh, uh, Kevin Beatty and uh, Michael Snyder, uh, the uh, do Sean Connery again? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, there, my memory well, well, no, was, here, here's what we here's what we're talking about, folks, because we don't want to leave the audience out out in the dark. That's right. You have a whole uh, new audience. Uh, he uh, he was doing a review and he was doing Sean Connery, and then he did a little impression, Michael, of what he thought he did was the impression of Sean Connery in The Untouchables. Yeah, and and it was really a terrible impression, if I, if I remember. <laughs> 
And uh, and and uh, Meany said, "Oh, that was a great impression of Connery, uh, Michael. Do it again." Oh, no. And and uh, Michael says, "No." And he goes, "Do it again. Do it again." In that voice you heard for Kevin Meany, yeah. "Do it again. Do it again." He starts doing, saying, "Do it again." It had to be what five minutes. Over oh, and God, over and it over just again, kept going on and on, and it got to a point. That it, 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 he, 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 this is what a dangerous comedian he was. He took it to a point where it was no longer funny, and then kept doing it more, so it became funnier again. again. You know, it, it, in other words, he took it to an extreme, and it was the one of the funniest things. I, I don't have a recording of it, but it's one of the. Well, fun and I well, may, but I can't do. find maybe it. Maybe you do. Uh, one thing, First Night premiered on uh, July 7th, 1995. Wait a minute, July so, 7th, 1995. Okay, uh, Damien, send me some more of my tapes. I don't think I have any from 19... What year was that? 1995, 1995. July 7th. I mean, I gave these dates from IMDb. And that's... So, what, what was that date again? July 7th, 1995. 7th. 1995. Okay. I know the movie was First Night with uh, uh, Richard Gere and Sean Connery. Who knows? I might be able to find the tape. But, I, you know. oh, oops. Oh, there's goes my phone. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I forgot to turn off my rigor. Uh, yes. but, as, but the interesting thing I just wanted to point out about this is 1995. This, that was actually, or this event, with between Meany and Snyder was actually before then. So obviously this was a feud that was going on for a while. It was a feud that was slowly building. Uh, Meany, for building. some reason or another, absolutely hated Michael Snyder. Uh, and the only way, if you, you know, Michael Snyder still does reviews for us on, on the weekends here. And uh, might I say that the only thing that's changed about Michael Snyder is brevity. He was. I noticed how fast he got through a movie review, in that thing. If you listen to him do it now, he goes on forever. You know, and uh, I wish I could play him that thing because he could see how fast, how how terse he was at giving the reviews. Uh, but then again, he knew we had time. You know, we had to had to use the time and so on. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever, yeah. but I, I I think that what you see briefly in that tape is the genius of Kevin Meany. There was just mm -hmm. he was there are certain comedians that I refer to as attitude comics, and he he was an attitude comic. There was just an attitude he had, and the attitude was funny no matter what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gilbert Gottfried's another attitude comic. Uh, isn't a guy who says, hi, ladies and gentlemen, hey, do you ever, you know, drive down the highway and blah, 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 and then they make you laugh by telling stories or relating yeah. to their childhood. No, an attitudinal comic, he has the whole bits of, he used to have things about, uh, well, we're big pants people. Mm -hmm. And then he would just, he would just drive it into the ground until people were, I've, act, I actually had one day that meeting went into something, I can't remember what it was. And I finally had to beg him to stop because yeah. I was hurting from laughing so hard that I, you can't I, I, the, the, I wanted the pain to stop. I asked him, please do me a favor. Stop. <laughs> OK, because you're making me laugh too hard. And he's dead now. So, yeah. you know, mm. Woody Allen said something once about that. He met Groucho Marx. He'd always mm -hmm. wanted to meet Groucho Marx. And he finally got to meet him. And it was after his third heart attack. Mm -hmm. And he was just a vegetable. Mm -hmm. oh, and, and, and Woody Allen yeah. said that depressed him for months mm. because yeah. he realized that no matter how funny you are, no matter how great you are at your craft, eventually you're going to just be a blithering idiot. You know, <laughs> really, I, that there, there's no there. There is no. Um, well, how, how do how do you, how do you put? It? I'm trying to remember how he put it again. There's no. There was no um, uh, reward for doing a good job. You know, that that all of a sudden here was this guy who had none of the capabilities he once had. They were all stripped from him by illness. Mm. And well, then there's 
yeah, there's something good to say about death is you're no longer a blithering <laughs> idiot. Well, you know, I mean, probably Groucho would have been better remembered if he had died from the first heart attack. You know, but he kept going on TV and you kept seeing him and he kept getting worse and worse and worse. And, uh, you know, if, if I have that big stroke, I'm not coming on. I'm sorry. It just, you know, you can do the show, Tom. <laughs> Jeff can do the show. Hey, somebody today, somebody <laughs> sent me a Facebook. Huh? Today, somebody sent me a Facebook link yeah. and it was the cast of MASH that all died. And it was like the whole show. It was, you know, there's just. Like two or three guys. Alan Alda, I think, is what? the only right. one. St well, he's yeah. still alive. Uh, and, I don't. Uh, I don't. The, who played the um, uh, Hot Lips? Uh, that you know, I forget. Oh, yeah. She she's still alive. Is she still alive? What was what was yeah. her name? I'm trying to remember her name now. Oh damn! Uh, yeah, shit. I can't remember her name. Uh, yeah. But so much of the other casts are gone. You know, it's weird. It's like. Uh, if you watch a rerun, it's like well, watching a show I, of ghosts. I hate to tell you this, John, but how many years ago was MASH? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's like I say, you know, like it, it's 80s, funny, right? but all the big rock and roll yeah. people that I used to listen to in the 50s are dead now. How did that yeah. happen? Well, well be, you know, mainly because I'm, I'm 78 and I'm heading for that long roundup myself, you know? You live forever on television. Or, or the I don't agree television with that. I don't internet. agree with that. I don't agree with that. Uh, you know, I listened to uh, uh, Jack Bishop, and he makes a lot of references about shows in the 50s, and I really want to say to him, don't do that, because basically <laughs> nobody understands what you're talking about. You know? Yeah. Uh, all, only people who are cognizanti would get some of those references. I think the other day he yeah. actually made a reference to somebody who was out before we were born, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I said, uh, you know, I keep saying to myself, you know, how many people are going to remember this stuff? Um, and the answer well, is... Well, they have reruns on the Internet. Now you, now you can see anything from any period. Yeah, but I don't, think, I don't think people really care about that stuff that's on TV. Uh, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, the old sitcom Nickelodeon. channel. Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon, yeah, Nick at Night yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, uh, right. Um, well, in, you know, in my... Uh, trade journals for live broadcasting, live streaming, mm -hmm. uh, there's always uh, some article about trends. And the biggest trend, the thing that uh, youth are eating up the most is gaming, online gaming and Twitch. Uh, and I have uh, watched it, some online gaming because I, I, I play games in my time. Hello, you there, Bree? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, okay. He was having some trouble there. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of a gamer. I mean, I like a few games, and if they come out, I buy them, and then I play them. And uh, i got to tell you something. They run about 50 bucks, and they're worth every penny because they give you endless hours of entertainment, endless hours of diversion, endless hours of what is the rest of your life wasted. Uh, <laughs> Well, it's good, you know. And I, I no, wait a minute. And, and I anymore, found, I found we, some I, channels on my PlayStation out there where you can yeah. watch people playing games. Yeah, and especially right. if it's like a game I've been playing, I really get fascinated by watching them play these games. And it's just, you know, it's the game and people are, and people are being shot at. But I love hey, watching uh, them. In 2001, yeah. I was in Kiev, uh, at Ukraine. Yeah. And I went, the internet connections are really bad. Yeah. Uh, so you had to go to the capital, uh, Kiev. And I went to an internet cafe. Right. And I sat down and I got online and I was talking to my wife or whatever, you know, texting or, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you know, sending emails. And then I had to do some spying because all these Ukrainians and Russians were sitting around you know, intently preoccupied in their video screens. It must have been like 30 people in this cafe, right? So I said, oh, man, I'm so curious what they're doing. I, I just kind of like uh, pretended, you know, like I had to go to the bathroom or something, and I kind of wandered around. So would you believe this? Just about every single one of them was doing an online war game. You know, shooting stuff, and and I just got such a bad. I never, out of that. I, thought, I never, oh, I like never so play with man. people online, and there's a reason for that, because yeah. I am so terrible at it that I get wiped out in three seconds, and it's no fun. 
<laughs> you know, I just peek my head out from behind a tree. My head's blown off. That's it. Yeah. You know, yeah. restart hey, that, game. That's the way I used to play computer chess. I got so fucking tired of losing all the time. I programmed all my pieces to be oh, uh, queens yeah. or something. I, I, I just stopped playing <laughs> chess. I just stopped playing chess because everybody was beating the shit out of me. And then I finally uh, decided when computers came out, well, at least I can beat a computer. Forget it. That's even worse. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. That's humiliating. Maybe now a piece of machinery, a, a piece of electronics computer. is yeah. beating your ass off. You know? <laughs> yeah. Hi, Patrick. Hi. How you doing tonight? Just yeah. peachy, right? Yeah, just peachy. He never Great. says, oh, I feel like shit tonight. You know? I don't. Yeah, so I, uh, that's great. Great. It's terrific. Yes, how are you, Bree? Uh, good, Alex. Yeah, esports, uh, universities have esports uh, programs in china they even have them much younger esports uh, what's that esports yeah. you know uh they're, they're the sport video games right oh 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 yeah yeah okay. yeah so china uh they have uh, a bunch of schools where you can go and it's a big and growing business wow uh, to, to go to esports schools and you know so some yeah. Instead it, of taking cheerleading or basketball, you take esports, uh, and they have, uh, you know, entire towns devoted, dedicated to this. This is ter that's terrific. That's really terrific. Uh, I, but I, you know, I enjoy watching people play games. Uh, it, 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 it's a big thing on Twitch. Yeah. You know, well, just well to, Twitch is huge. the major. It's huge. Twitch is the major method of doing it. In other words, if I want to hook yeah. my computer yeah. up to twitch and yeah. play games i can do it on twitch twitch is the preferred game for that you know oh, yeah. here comes amy manuel yeah. i wonder what i did wrong tonight uh yeah hello amy well, there's a, uh, hey there's a, there's a movie online called free to play uh, you can get it on youtube mm -hmm. and it follows three esports um competitors yeah who are very big very big in the sports Competing for like a one million dollar prize or something like that. Wow! And uh, it's a very interesting documentary. It goes into their lives and why they play, and you know, it's not just the game. They show a little bit of that, uh, and it it gives you the whole view of this esports phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, no, I, I'll have to look for that. I, I, uh, but I, I can, I, you know, I can see why people would sit there and watch people play games. How many, anybody here play video games? Jeff, I'm sure plays video games, I do. right, Jeff? Yeah. No, not at all. Not at I all. Do. You, you do. What do you, what do you play, Amy? Oh, I just some really kind of stupid Facebook games. Plus, I play. <laughs> uh, actually, my husband and I play Pokemon Go together. Pokemon. That's like go. our day oh, Come on, that's not a video <laughs> that's an outside game. Thing. Don't you have to go outside and it, use your? Yeah, smartphone? I could never play that because it would involve yeah. going outside. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, especially well, in the snow. It, it would involve place. something I think they refer to as walking. You know. Uh, uh, um. Well, we'll like drive to to places and and just drive real slowly. Yeah, well, I I play I play oh, the first, I play a lot of first shooter games and games where you have to uh, do well, things do like that. climb up rocks and then jump over to another rock and what well, you can't do that, Bree. No, you know what's funny, Alex is I get dizzy if I play those games. Like I really? I play StarCraft <laughs> too. That's my main game. Yeah. Is it is it a three D game? Because I I get dizzy. Uh, yeah. I can't watch 3D movies. That's, every, everybody's getting crazy about virtual reality. You go into the shopping mall and there are all these people bobbing their heads up and down. I put that on for like five seconds and I have a severe headache, completely, mm -hmm. you know, discombobulated. Can't do it at all. So for my like birthday, future, I guess I'm out of it. Let me guess. You have astigmatism. Yes, I do. For my birthday this year, Same here. My, my wife went out and bought me a $400 virtual reality goggles. Do you use it? We sent it right back. Because <laughs> I said, I love you, dear. And this is, you know, the, she, because she had somebody at the office that had them. And she tried them and said, oh, this is terrific, you know. And I said, send it back because we're going to use hey. it once. No, because we're going to use it once. And then we're going to put it away in a corner somewhere. 
and we're going to go wow. You know, best, best, best TV show that ever dealt with that topic was a spinoff from Battlestar Galactica. It was a prequel called Caprica. Check it yes, out. Yes, Caprica, Caprica. I know. I, I, have, oh, I, have, them all. I, I have them all, by the way. I, yeah. I collected yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. There was some movie um, with, my. I want to say, Michael Douglas and oh, Demi, uh, Demi Moore. Mm-hmm. That um, it was about she was the the boss and doing the sexual harassment, but there was some whole thing with a virtual reality kind of file system that it looked like you were walking through an well, opening file drawer. Well, you you've lost me. I don't. I don't. <laughs> was, was Sean? Penn I think it was in made that? for there TV. Was it was not of... really good. Oh well, yeah. then. All right. Okay, then I'll avoid it if I ever see anything by that description. <laughs> yes, Jeff. I'm curious as to what happened with Amy yesterday. Disclosure. All, uh, changes in, uh, in you in Texas. Oh, yeah. Well, we had our, our primary yesterday, and most of the people I was rooting for and working with won their primaries. In fact, um, our new chair trounced trounced the incumbent <laughs> who who by the way i had printed up these um yeah but these are prime ballots. these are primaries right yeah this is the yeah because you're all but, you're but the, all gonna get your ass handed to you by republicans in texas well not necessarily this time around we had about four times the turnout even in denton county as we've had as we had in 2014 well we're still still this is just the primaries you know so, I mean, when it's a Democrat going up against a Democrat, you can go, yay, the Democrat won. <laughs> well, know? yeah. But in this case, there was some pretty hot. I mean, usually we have in, you know, locally here, we have nothing going on. Well, I think but, if you want to have a sure winner, in, uh, do you have anything like a governor race or anything coming up? Right? Yes, actually. Yeah. So we've got um, so at the top of I the ticket, say, yeah. we have uh, Beto O'Rourke is going to be our candidate again. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah. And and he is really going all over the state. Yeah. I just saw him last night on one of the national shows talking about how um, he is visiting places that haven't had any statewide candidates visit them. Yeah. Since Never. the '60s, yeah. well, anyway, since LBJ. This is boring. This is boring because it's Texas politics, and most people don't know know the the ins and outs of Texas politics, the nuances. Hey, we yeah. miss all I'm Molly saying. Ivins, all I'm I'll saying you, is, Molly if you, if, if the Democrats want to win anything in Texas, uh, just run Stormy Daniels, and I think <laughs> you might have a shot. Uh, no, but we have Lupe Valdez. How about a gubernatorial candidate? that is she she was sheriff of dallas county but she's like five foot tall oh that's lesbian hot. latina that's hot <laughs> girl on girl action nothing <laughs> better should, right right patrick used to work for homeland security because every time i i used to go out with women the people would say to me is she a lesbian because i used to like that kind of look you know i like short hair <laughs> on a woman yes patrick i I'd, I'd vote for her just if she sounds hot and if she looks hot that's enough. I yeah. don't give a shit yeah. what you have to say. You, you'd vote for... <laughs> our, our ratings just went down. You'd vote... No, actually, we're getting more listeners right now. Patrick, would you vote for Stormy uh, Daniels? Really? Yeah. She's blonde. Uh, she's blonde. You know what? Use and, I mean, and she's got the fake fun bags, but don't let that yeah, stop you. Yeah. No, I... I, I the, Latina sounds good. That, that yeah, the five foot tall lesbian Latina who's I mean, she's a badass. We see, well, she I, can I, kick she can kick any of your asses, probably all of you at once. Well, I don't that's not what I I don't find that part attractive in a woman, however, because I don't want my ass kicked, okay? You know, I behave myself. You will have no reason to kick my ass. Democrats should run Stormy Daniels. She'll be she would beat President Trump easily. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Stormy, well, Stormy Daniels. I was telling a girlfriend, and I, I, I don't find anything sexy about her because uh, she's not just not my kind of woman. I don't like the fake Lee press on breasts, and uh, I don't, uh, I, you know, 
I, I never liked porno actresses who gave me the sense that they were trying to act like whores. You know, I like the ones that were kind of more innocent, more real, uh, more uh, even a little ugly. So they were accessible to me, you know. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, uh, well, and that's usually the problem with with lesbians is men always think that there's a chance they're going to get together with two women. No, and, that's not and, what that's, 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 not, that's not what this. it is at all. That's not what it is at all, Amy. It is the it is the illusion that they might be able to change them. Okay, right, that exactly. you're going to be the guy that's going to be so good, they're not going to want women anymore. And I got news for you guys. Boy, are you barking up the wrong tree. That's right. You know. Yes, uh, Patrick. Always, yes, Patrick. Not always. It, it isn't even that for me. It's just the thought of the two of them going at it, and that's enough. Well, no, I, I <laughs> never, I, watch, I, I huh? never, I never, got, <laughs> I, I never, Patrick, I never got hot over two women. Uh, having sex with each other because I always feel left out when I see the, you know. No, I've never had that problem. I need a male representation there, right? <laughs> I'll get, I'll be the male, right, but, sitting in the corner watching. That's good enough for me. By, the, by the way, uh, what was it? What was it that uh, I was watching this thing with Alec Baldwin and uh, Jerry Seinfeld the other night uh, called Alec Baldwin on Sundays with Alec Baldwin, which is going to be a series and he was maybe one of the best interviewers i've seen he's just terrific okay um oh, he but, was doing some interviews on turner classic movies no that, that, that he wasn't doing interviews he was talking movies on that this is straight this is interviewing but anyway mm -hmm. uh but jerry seinfeld was on and uh what was he was saying there was a thing that, that larry david said about about weinstein and people who would, uh, you know, go and take showers and come out in their bathrobes. And I can't remember what it is right now. Damn it. Oh, well. But uh, Baldwin did have a perfect description of what D Weinstein must have looked like naked. He said he was a human derma. Mm. <laughs> That's a Jewish thing. Okay, forget it. <laughs> and it went right past me. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what derma is? I do, explain I do it, not. Alex. You huh? gotta explain it. The derma is a uh, is a is a it's a it's a kind of uh, it's a, it's an undescribable food. Okay, it's <laughs> stuffed derma. It's a it's some kind of I don't know organ from something stuffed with uh. stuff. Uh. Uh. Is there a better uh, Jew uh, than me oh, out so there like who can a, call uh, up and and tell uh, tell them what a stuffed derma is? But anyway, he described him as a human derma. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, apparently we don't have that in Texas. Yeah, yeah. What it, whatever a derma is. Yeah, well, no, you probably do. It's just you're not Jewish enough. Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> you know. Uh, because I, I mean, my ancestors were rabbis. Well, J Jews, like, eat stuff like, do you, do you have you ever had Grieben? See, now... I've been what in kind Texas of, too long. No, no, you've been in, you're a Texas Jew. You don't know from these things. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's is anybody know what Grieben is? Anybody? Is the whole world thinks you, all Jews minute, are minute, like Jews in minute. New York. Jeff is Jewish. Do you know what Grieben is? Right. Yes, and I would say Grieben. Okay, but you can say Grieben. You can say Grieben. Yeah. Oh, I, I say tomato. You say tomato. That's right. But tell her what Grieben is or Grieben. That I don't quite remember. Well, it's Maybe it's it's, it's, it's cooked chicken skin. Yeah. yeah. It's wow. cooked chicken skin. I love it. I just love it. It also gives me the trots, so I don't eat it much. But I love my mother. You, hello, Renee. You there, Renee? Apparently, oh. she she had some problems here. Are you there, Renee? Let me see if she's still on. Yeah, she's still. It looks like she's there. Who knows? Well, I have. One more interesting candidate from yesterday that oh, unfortunately God. Here we go, lost. The Texas fucking politics. Go ahead. No, but this, well, okay. Well, no, but nobody so cares. How about a land commissioner oh, who yeah. at one time when I met him had a five-inch high spiked bright orange mohawk? Yeah. So? Oh, there. Uh, Bush has won in Texas again. Renee is outside. <laughs> Hello, Renee. Why can't we hear you? Wait a minute. 
Uh, hold on. Oh, she's I, uh, doing uh, signs, sign language. I'm, a, I'm here <laughs> on the northern coast. Yeah. Wait a minute. Where? Where? Okay. Well, now she's going to show us. All we can see something. is is the sky. Yeah, but you need the, to lower the camera a bit. Yeah. Yeah, she's there, in Hawaii. Oh, there you go. The there we go. The, the a, a lovely sunset. Oh, pretty. Yeah. Now, now, if Bree somehow could have had a picture of the sun going up in Dubai, that would really make great television, you know. So, anyway. Uh, one, one of these days. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, it seems like the Stormy Daniels thing has gotten a lot of, uh, a lot of press today. <laughs> like, it seemed to be the topic du jour oh, yeah. on MSNBC. It's, it's oh, well, because it turned out it, wait that, it, wait that hold uh, on a second. Hold Donald on a second, Trump Amy. Didn't wait a minute. Sign wait a minute. The Br thing. Bree was talking, Amy. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, no, it's fine. Go ahead. Amy. No, go ahead. No, go ahead, Bree. Well, you, because you said it's a news story over there, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we, we've heard that here. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, we've known about Stormy Daniels for a while, but now it turns out that. Uh, uh, I think uh, Trump is suing her or attempting to sue her for a million dollars because she broke the confidentiality agreement for the hundred and thirty thousand dollars. But it turns out he didn't sign it. Yeah. Yeah, but is he going to sue it with his alias, or is he going to sue it with his? <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they had they had D D A K A and then blank. Okay, yeah. and that's where Trump was supposed to sign it. Uh huh. Uh, but um, uh, well, now he's got a restraining order. It, well, that's fine, and, and it might work though. It might work. You know, you're saying, well, he didn't sign it, but she took the hundred and thirty thousand dollars. You know, so that kind of makes it valid. Well, his attorney this morning said he was will she was willing to give it back if that's the case. Really? Oh, well, okay. she's prepared to give it back. All right. I mean, does isn't this so friggin' weird? I mean, this is we're talking about the president of the United States. Yeah. I mean, what, well, it was fuck. It was fucking. It, it was fucking weird. 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 It was fucking weird when we were talking about a president getting blowjobs in the Oval Office. You know, I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah, that but was that was too. the main story. This is like a, a second or third story because there's so yeah. much shit happening at the White House. Yeah, yeah but you it's know almost something? as weird Some... as the Attorney General flying to California to sue California. Yeah. Well, it, they <laughs> said, oh, "Hello, Renee. There she is." Uh, 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 let me let me let me throw this one on you. Somebody was saying today, and I think it was uh, it was a, it was a very good comment, and that was that it's gotten to the point where Donald Trump has so much bad behavior that nobody's surprised by it any longer. In other oh, yeah. words, the reason we don't get so uh, uh, bothered by it is because, quite frankly, so. Yeah, we yeah, he fucked, he, he, he fucked the uh, hey, hey, fuck playmate, you know, we, you know, I mean. We should. We wait, should wait a minute, he not, only, he not only screwed oh. a playmate and Stormy Daniels at the same time that his wife had just given birth to their son. Okay, that's bad okay. enough, but the fact of the yeah. matter is, doesn't ma it doesn't matter, uh, because y you expect this out of him. So this is behavior we now kind of go along with because, well, well that's, that's Donald. Well, it's the same thing they said about Weinstein, too, for years. Ah, that's, that's Harvey, you know? Uh, it, 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 I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's a big story, but I think it's going to go away, because it, and it's not going to undo him. Uh, there are going to be a lot of other things that are going to undo him before that undoes him. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, sorry for interrupting. Uh, but, you know, I'd love to send a reporting team to Italy and ask the average... Italian on the street. What do they think of Donald Trump? Hey, because they had their Donald Trump. Yeah, his name was Silvio Berlusconi. This yeah. guy was a total. Uh, oh, jerk by the way, off. by the I way, mean, for your know, for your like company, and getting for, it back. for your information, so, yeah, he's yeah, running he's again. He's running yeah. again. More, yeah. but more. I mean, you want? He's more outrageous than Trump. He more, was like humping his uh, his limo driver it, more, in front of the cameras. Yeah, but more bunga yeah. bunga parties. That's the good news. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so to the Italians, just this is crooked. nothing. Yeah. And this, just as crooked and mafia connected. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't. I do. Th well, I don't think Trump's mafia connected. I think Trump. Oh, has, oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, 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 no. 
I think Trump, <laughs> because you don't live in New York, so you don't understand how business is done here. If you are uh, a, um, uh, a businessman in New York, you pretty much have to do business with the mob in order to get stuff done. In other words, in order to get goods moved across town, you got to you know, grease the palm of the mob. So you know mobsters. So the fact that he did business with mobsters, he would have had to have done business with mobsters in order to build Trump City, for instance. Yes. But doesn't yes, that make him yeah, mafia connected? No, that, that, that makes everybody who does business in New York mafia connected. Tom? Mm -hmm. uh, let's expand this. Organized crime connected. And that's where you can bring in the Russians. Uh, right. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. No. Okay. No. Uh, and uh, Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, let's and see here. UAE, uh, you know, and. and uh, yeah, and the Saudis. Saudis. Okay. 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 So, now. you know, so you got all this stuff against yeah. him. It's like everybody has been numb to what he does. They don't. Nobody's going, oh, Stormy Daniels. Isn't that a horrible thing? You know where where are the Republicans? Uh, where like are the moral the Republicans saying? One hundredth level. Yeah, but where where are the where, where, worst things he's yeah, done? But where are the moral Republicans who want uh, more moral America? Like uh, uh, what's his name? His his uh, second in command. Uh, 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 Pence. 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 Pence would if I said to Pence, "Hey, uh, I'm going to go fuck a. I'm married and my wife just gave birth to a child, but I'm going to go fuck a porn actress." Hi, what do you, how do you think Pence would, Pence would react to that? And yet he's putting up with it from Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. That's because Trump is giving them exactly what they want. They're, they're uh, slashing taxes on corporations, making deals with uh, overseas accounts. They're, they're uh, uh, the you know, adva yeah, packing the Supreme Court. They're going to cut Medicare, Social Security. They're... It, it, Trump is the Republican wet dream. They're fine for pu putting up with all yeah. his stupid shit because he's giving them the meat and the potatoes, man. Patrick's got his hand up. Patrick. Yeah, I mean, if if grabbing pussy did not cause any wave within the right. evangelical community, there you go. Way back then. This, they, they were going to vote for Roy Moore. But, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and and frankly, like for me, I've got a friend of mine on Facebook, and she is a liberal feminist on steroids, and she makes every feminist that I know look like uh, she posted something today, and it was anti-Trump, and I said to her, you know what? I don't spend one waking moment worrying about it because if that initial thing about the pussy grabbing did not turn people off on the Republican side, Stormy Daniels isn't going to do a damn thing. So I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't spend an extra second posting about it. It's just nothing. Not, See, yeah, it's I'm, nothing. I'm much more concerned about the fact that the Russians had a say in who he picked for Secretary of State, and that Secretary of State that he did pick has been disassembling the State Department and not you, enforcing you the can, sanctions. You can be concerned about it, but you can't do nothing about it. That's right, Amy. Can't That's do true. shit about it. You know? Uh, but it's a much that's, bigger that's deal. State, that, that's going to continue. Stormy Daniels democracy. is like, yeah, so what? The Russians, yeah. ha, the Russians learned from us very well. They listened to Abraham Lincoln, you know, and they knew that the only way to, that we would defeat uh, is to defeat ourselves. And mm -hmm. essentially, they're using our system mm -hmm. against us. And quite frankly, I don't, I don't know that it, our system can withstand it. Not ultimately. The damage that's done is is going to be everlasting. And if you look around the world, the, the trend is towards, you know, autocracy. It's towards uh, the, the absolute monarchs. Yeah, I, I think that not total authoritarianism. It's more like, um, you know, kind of Brave New World-ish meets 1984-ish. But that seems to be illusion, the trend. Uh, illusion right. of democracy. That's right. Well, yeah. we've had an illusion of democracy here for, for centuries. 
You know, I, I don't think we've ever had a real democracy in this country. We have an illusionary democracy that makes people think that we have some control over our lives, which basically I don't think we do. Yes, Patrick. Wait a minute. Your mic isn't on, Patrick. Can't hear you. Uh, Never been a democracy. It's been a republic since the beginning, a representative <laughs> republic. So the, the but, yeah, whole but, thing we've been, I mean, I was taught the same word, democracy, in school. It, it's never been yet. It's been a representative republic from day one. Well, I, I have to disagree on this to this extent, Patrick, that when we say democracy, we're implying that we have total freedom of speech, freedom of the press, all the things the Constitution guarantees us. And yet, in reality, that's all really an illusion. I mean, as someone... Uh, People have said to me, well, Alex, you do a talk show and you say whatever you feel. And I go, I don't say everything I can feel. I feel I can't say anything uh, that that might really upset the status quo. I can give my opinion on something, you know, but and if I was on a radio station and my opinion was too far to the left, well, here's yeah, where I off. am doing my little Internet show. Yes. Like but, Peter B. Collins. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've got to say, I still have hope in local politics, in which I'm involved in, in local Marin County politics. And i got to say, yes, we still have democracy here. Uh, we can get uh, candidates elected who uh, represent a majority feeling, and if we don't like them, we can vote them out. We can get. We can yeah. go to our board of supervisors but, 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 or city but, but meetings, wait a minute, wait a minute, and people but, listen to but, us. We minute, can have but, an impact. But that's an illusion in, in and of itself, because you think that well, by that happening, your think. assumption is that by that happening, there's going to be a seed change in this nation, and there isn't going to be. No, you know? I'm saying that you're tr you're correct. Uh, on what kind of a level. sea change are you looking for? I, I, no, don't put words in. Uh, no, well, no, I, 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 I was never, asking. I was asking Alex. I'm not uh, saying what that. kind of I'm sea change do I that. want? Outright revolution. No, okay? I, I'm saying I that, want people uh, who are so the, democracy and those those concepts have uh, shrunk down to the local level. Because, uh, because I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you something. I'm going to say something, but first, Patrick has his hand up. Oh, wait, Tom had his hand up first, and then Patrick. Yes, Tom. Okay, so going back to the illusion and what Patrick was saying is the type of democracy we are is being a republic. The illusion is that our, our representatives actually represent the whole of the, of the, of the population. Mm -hmm. What in fact, mm -hmm. what's, what's happened is through uh, gerrymandering, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and and the actual also the compromises when we came up with the electoral college, from the very fatality uh, that 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 there is a disproportionate representation from some some of the population, mm -hmm. particularly the rural population, the the, the uh, as opposed Cows to cows get more the, votes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but as I'm saying that that we have this illusion that that. If you have fifty percent or fifty-five percent of the voters uh, uh, in a particular, you know, party, that you'll have fifty-five percent of the representatives of that party too, and it's not happening. It hasn't been happening for a long time. We basically have a ruling minority right now. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yes, Patrick. <clears throat> I, I think I said this back when Trump was elected and probably back when Obama was still in office. Uh, local politics, for me, are more important because while we had Obama as president, we were able to, in Wisconsin, elect Governor Scott Walker. And that's what, what, that's what I wanted. That's what a majority of Wisconsinites wanted. And it's the same at the local level for mayors and, and people like that. Those are the people that affect our lives day to day constantly. And yes, Washington, D.C. does affect us. But in the very immediate future, our school boards, our governors, our mayors, our city clerks or whomever represent us at a local level, if you're not going to get involved in that, then don't fucking bitch nationally, 
because you mm -hmm. got to start at the local level and then you move your way up to the national with the senate and the house and then you you know then you've got your president but yes but, 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 wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute but i think what you're doing is you're kind of believing in that uh that uh hamster wheel I, that we are we are led to, led to believe is going to create change yeah but alex in wisconsin it, we had we had throughout the obama administration mm -hmm. we had governor walker mm -hmm. governor walker was doing things completely different than what obama was doing and that's what we wanted that's what i wanted yeah my vote counted locally Yes. Uh, Do you believe that your vote counts as much now that Citizen United is in play? Good question. Well, I, for me, I haven't seen any change. I mean, it, it, I haven't, there haven't been any election other than Trump where I voted and my, I didn't get what I wanted that I sure as hell didn't vote for him. But uh, for the most part, I mean, locally in that, if, if it's a loss, it, it's a loss by a, a narrow margin. It's not somebody getting paid off. So mm -hmm. it's just unique to where I'm at. See, I believe that you make trouble because that's how you make change. Uh, because, you know, it's funny, but nothing ever gets changed in this country unless somebody is afraid. Unless the people in Washington are afraid, you know. And uh, I think the whole civil rights thing and the fact that it it it, it was changed and that that uh, blacks got more rights in this country was because the whites were afraid and they just said let's pass something we got to do something about this let's keep them from you know yeah. we don't want them yeah. right so i believe that something that strikes fear into the body politic i mean literal fear where they're worrying about their lives it probably has more of an effect on them than signing a little petition and sending it to Washington. Okay. Hey, case in point, uh, right now there's a big battle going on in this state with uh, two Senate bills, 827, 828. They're for uh, replacing local control and local governance over what gets built where, especially around transportation corridors. And, uh, you know, the developers and the big tech industries here in the Bay Area have uh, put forth uh, uh, AstroTurf uh, groups and they've got Scott Senator, State Senator Scott Weiner, uh, you know, advocating for this kind of housing. They're getting pushed back, Alex, in Los Angeles and Boyle Heights. There are people that are fighting this kind of gentrification, you know, where uh, boutique uh, businesses come in, uh, developers with giant eight story uh you know, you know, luxury uh, apartments are displacing people. So th these kids and activists of all sorts are uh, going to these shops. They're yeah. spray painting the doors. They're saying, move out, get out. We don't want you in our neighborhood. Uh, uh, in Oakland, they've even set fire to some of these giant high rise developments that are going on because they're displacing people. So is that as what long, you're talking about? Uh, if it is, uh, uh, I think uh, that, yeah, that's as good. long as I am all for burning those buildings. Okay. Yeah. As long as there's nobody in them. Yeah. Right. In other words, yeah, well, you, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I see nothing wrong with attacking mm -hmm. property. You yeah, know, I, yeah. I find that property <laughs> is, uh, it, it simply, it, it, it's, it's Renee is shaking her head. It's, it's a, Patrick, are you going to jump in on this and play Phil, or do you want me to get in there and do the Phil? Are you thing? going to be a Republican tonight, Renee? <laughs> Just for like a heartbeat. Uh, because you know, God damn it, if Phil was here, he would say that property needs to be protected, and those people are breaking the law, and they should be shot on sight. But don't you understand that most of the laws we have in this country don't protect you, they protect property? And the wealthy. And the, well, the, in in the that property because, and, because the and the reason yeah. why it's the wealthy yeah. is because the wealthy own the property. Yeah. All right. right. But if I if I burn down a, a, a building with nobody in it, so nobody gets hurt, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. going to wind up getting as much time in prison as some guy who killed somebody. All right. Yeah. And yeah. and and because property is so valued over human life, okay, 
that that's Certainly that's a reality in this country. Boy, am I getting radical tonight? Uh, yes. Well, uh, mm -hmm. first uh, let's go through Tom, and then let's do Patrick. Okay. Oh boy. So let me be the one that's. <laughs> Say to defend uh, uh, the, uh, the property. Um, but I completely disagree with that analysis. That uh, that building housing on transportation corridors is going to exasperate uh, uh, gentrification. Actually, exact opposite. It's going to be relieving gentrification. And uh, I think it's despicable. No fucking way. I think it's despicable Sorry. that people are burning. Yeah, I'll be back in a few minutes. Making, okay. They're making, they making the situation worse. And we do need more housing. We need housing of all types. We need, and, 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 and the, the environmental community. Well, uh, uh, here, uh, here, when I was talking about it, I wasn't talking about housing as much as I was talking about property. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, right. I'm talking about specifically about about people who are burning down housing because they have this notion that they are making uh, neighborhoods more affordable for poor people. Exact opposite. Exact opposite. They're 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 actually making housing more expensive. They're making the situation worse. And mm -hmm. we 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 need, as I said, we need to have. Housing for all levels of incomes. And, well, you no, know, I, and, just to oh, counter on no, that, I mean, I agree that, with that. I, this I, whole issue of affordability. They're building this kind of shit all over right now, and none of it is affordable. The the uh, the uh, affordability that they are given is so uh, the percentage is so small, and and uh, they never uh, put a price tag on affordability. Like, what's affordable? Uh, you know, if you if you want to talk about anything, if you want to talk about make right, if you want to talk about making change, you got to uh, have a national fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage. You have to start giving people raises, uh, uh, picking up the standard of living for the middle class and the working poor. You, mm -hmm. you can't have people working two or three jobs or working gig economy jobs. Uh, like Uber or Lyft or shit like that, and expect them to be able to afford to live here in the Bay and Area. I, I fully so support, you build your damn I houses, they're not going to house anyone. I fully support, really, the wage, fully support getting people unionized, fully support that. But as I said, if you're going to say, we're, you know, we're not building any housing... That, no, that, that's you know, not those of us that are opposed. Uh, high, they want to build 10 story houses. Uh, Alex, you know where you did your show? We were just talking about that a couple nights ago uh, at the Goodman's in Mill Valley. They're talking about tearing down the Goodman's and building a giant 10 story housing complex complex there. Uh, I mean, that's uh, what good, we're talking good, about. Goodman's, that's lady, add good, such wait a minute, good, good, Goodman's was a lumber store, then became a housewares yeah. store. And it's probably one of the biggest yeah. ones in Marin. Uh, yeah. uh, where are you going to buy your trestles from now? I mean, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, I mean, uh, well, no, I mean, what the, the other thing? Uh, someone said it. Uh, a former mayor of Fairfax uh, nearby here said that what these uh, these rule changes are going to do is create an unfunded mandate. Because how are we going to support the influx of these kind of people? These numbers of people living on transportation cars, you're going to have to have water, uh, uh, PG&E. You're going to have to have extra fire, police. We don't even have the fire trucks in Marin to be able to fight a fire on a 10-story apartment well, complex. Well, I think, I think, I, I think it's that, important that the, the, uh, the county uh, create uh, rules about that, that you know, can't have any structures over a certain size, because of course, oh, that's they, what, you, uh, I mean, there's a, wait a minute, there's a, there, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's a, there's but, a, wait a minute, hold on a second, there's a law in Marin, for instance, because I know Marin intimately since I grew up there, uh, yeah. there was a law in Marin, longstanding since we first moved there, where you cannot have a billboard in Marin County. You, if, I defy yeah, you to find a building. that's still true. And so, true. so you can yeah. pass laws that say you can't build a building taller than three or four stories. You know, a palm tree. Uh, yeah, but, but 8, 827 and 828 are abrogating that. They're saying that uh, you can't build and, eight and ten story. What's uh, 827 and 828? Uh, Senate Bill 827, oh, okay. 828. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, you uh, know, to, if you want to find out about this stuff, go people to People have to understand that Marin, Marin, Marin County is a Can very I? kind of bucolic area, even though it's a there are a lot of people living there and there's a lot of moneyed people in there. Uh, it oh, yeah. still is a very kind of bucolic atmosphere in which I don't think I I don't know of a building taller than four stories. I think I worked in one in San Rafael, maybe few that are taller than that in, the, in some of the major cities. But, you know, out there, right there on Highway 101, they have that kind of building. Boy, that's a pain in the ass. Yes. That's what Let they want to do, Alex. Renee it, first, it, and, then, yeah. and then, and, and then uh, 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 Amy. Uh, yes. <laughs> I just want to make one comment about the burning down buildings. Here's the problem with that. Fires spread. Things uh, we're, catch we're fire talking that about this, uh, Amy. And are, Amy, and, we're not talking about this literally as much as we are philosophically. But but he was right. talking I, about I don't, their I don't burning buildings. Yes. I, I don't. I'm, I don't condone arson. All right. I'm. I point that out because that shows a level of uh, anger uh, that is not making it out into the airwaves. You know, I mean, yeah, they, they tell the news about that, but they don't go out and interview people and ask them why. And and uh, there's a lot of people that support that. So yeah, that's going to okay. tell you something. That's going to tell you about a lo level of angst out there. Okay. Yeah, but Tom, that's cutting Tom, off Tom, your nose just Tom, your face. Tom has his hand. Right. I will concede, yeah, there's lots of large areas of Murray County that should not be developed. But definitely here where I am in the East Bay, I live one block away from San Pablo Avenue, mm -hmm. major transportation corridor. We definitely could, could handle a lot more density and a lot more building along the San Pablo corridor. Would you be able to, would you be able to, to, uh, to, to agree to that? I think, yeah. I think that it's San Francisco uh, and Berkeley, uh, yeah. opposed SB, uh, 827, 828. Yeah, no, because no, no, no but no, wait, 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 actually, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. Nancy Skinner is a co-sponsor. Hold on a second. The point is that when we're talking about Richmond, we're talking about a different area than we're talking about Marin County. I mean, I would hate to see Marin County have a lot of tall buildings. I think that it's not the nature of that right. that that right. county. It's a very green county. It's got a lot of woods and trees and things like that. And big buildings like that would kind of destroy it. On the well, other hand, how much um, money you got? Richmond, <laughs> Richmond okay. is uh, well. There, there's the answer. Uh, Richmond, on the other hand, is a lot of business and 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 is more industrial in nature. And so it could take those kind of buildings and probably would make uh, an improvement to Richmond. That's what we're saying. You know. Yes. <laughs> if uh, I may, just a quick question. Yeah. Yeah. Are a, a specific a percentage of each one of these new structures built uh, required to be of a certain level, a uh, certain below a certain level of income, and then above? Yes. Isn't there a percentage per structure? So if oh, you're really small, it's so small. Well, then let's bump it up. And you're not talking about a minimum wage at fifteen dollars. You're talking and fighting for a living wage, and that's all I got to say. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me see here. Somebody, I see somebody else with a hand up. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, and and I, I think the question was answered already. Um, I was going to bring up the fire department. You know, you want livable uh, places and, and you want uh, to be able to afford them. Well, you can't if your taxes are going up because you can't have a fire department large enough that's going to put out the fires at a building you're burning down to prove what fucking point. That you don't have enough housing, so you're going to burn down the possible housing that's mm -hmm. going to require tax money to be used for fire department to put out the fucking fires of the building that are going to be rebuilt anyway. And then I'll put on my liberal cap just for a second here, kind of oh. like uh, Renee put on her. Wait a minute. Here you can have mine. You know. <laughs> That's a Tommy hat, man. <laughs> what about the environment with burning down these fucking buildings it, 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 just to make a point? I mean, to me, it's just ridiculous. And I know, like, where I live, um, any new construction, like apartments or condos, that sort of thing, there is, like Renee said, a, a certain 
threshold where you have to have uh, either disability or low income, whatever it is, available. And no, it's not a huge percentage, but then again, that's something that can be worked on mm -hmm. locally if people want it. Right. Well, the, the 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 problem with affordable housing, and I am all for that. And uh, in fact, my heart goes out to the homeless. If you go drive around downtown San Francisco nah, fuck now, the, fuck the homeless. It'll, right, it'll make you <laughs> sick Bill's just here. to see all the tents. <laughs> and everything. The spirit of I I, yeah. I hate the homeless. They're such a drag on our society. Why don't they get a job, huh? Yeah, right. So, uh, you know, this is the city of St. Francis, St. Francis, San Francisco. Yeah, but he was a I mean, to see the, the condition that the homeless are living in is, is horrible. You know, why don't these uh, legislators uh, create something uh, to uh, house them? You know, we had a, a chance to do this That's in Marin. Doing with this bill. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not for the homeless. They're trying to build more housing. No, the, they're building market rate housing. They They're built the okay and the market rate they're housing they're is the market seven. Rate housing. Yeah, market rate housing here is seven hundred grand and above. Let me let me let me let me let me kind of let me put a different spin on this whole discussion. I live here in Harlem. In Harlem, it was a place you moved because you didn't have money because you were black and they didn't want you in other parts of the town. You felt more comfortable here. Uh, but you could get an apartment for next to nothing. There are people in this apartment building who are still, because they are rent-controlled, not even rent-stabilized, paying, you know, $300, $400 a month for a, for a 15-room apartment, right? Oh, uh, but, but... I want to be their child. <laughs> all, the, all, all the new people moving into this apartment building are paying 7000 for an apartment. I want to so what it, what happens with all this stuff uh, when you when you um, gentrify a neighborhood like they have in Harlem, what once was a affordable place for people of little means, it has now become an impossible place for them to live. And where do they go? Where's it's, exactly. uh, uh, yes, uh, Kevin, you're you're you got your hand up. Well, it's the same thing that's going on here where I live. We yeah. used to be in an area where what, 50 miles south of Silicon Valley, and it used to be an air, uh, an affordable area. Now we're going through the same thing. They're building up this area, you know, where I could buy a house for $250,000. My house is now worth about 600000 mm -hmm. and they're building all over here. People are going nuts. They haven't built any of the roads around here. There's like three roads in and out of this town, mm -hmm. and they're all falling apart. Like right now, they're they've got one road, the main road, cut off because they're building the. the at least they're not the, fracking the out there trestle, and destroying it. The with main those railroad trucks. trestle, they've got it closed off. Everybody's going crazy trying to get in and out of this town for the next two days, and uh, the main routes are only two lanes. They don't have enough fire. They don't have enough police, and they're still building 244 houses a year, and what that's town is that? that's being restricted. So what, what town? It's Hollister. Oh, Hollister. Yeah. Got South it. of Gilroy? Oh, ho yeah. yeah. All I'm yeah, saying we're, is... We're, we're, we're in the corner of the... the we, I call it the, uh, yeah. the San Benito Triangle. Listen, I live, I, live, I, I, live, I live with a reality that if tomorrow I moved out of this apartment house, I would have to move out of Manhattan. I would have to move out of New York because I couldn't afford anything anywhere else in New York now. Yeah. These people yeah, are you know, paying... Yeah. Twenty six hundred dollar, twenty six hundred dollars in rent on a three bedroom house in rent, and they have to. Is that in Hollister? Silicon Valley. And that's in I Hollister. Don't pay that much. You know, for who, my you know, you have four to blame bedroom, for that. Two bath well, who you, who you no, but they're traveling sixty miles. Feet. Who you have to blame? You know, who you have to blame jobs. for that, Kevin. Who you have to blame for that is all those fucking Silicon Valley assholes. Exactly. Who went that's in there and exactly. just I used to travel one hundred and fifty miles a day. To work, yeah, yeah, to and yeah. from. Well, that, that's the reason why San Francisco is now impossible to live in financially, is because they, yeah. are the, all, all uh, they all move their companies up there. I mean, uh, yeah. the place where I used to do my radio shows that people remember that was on Eighth Eighth Avenue, uh, which was called the Furniture Mart. That's now Twitter. 
Or is it Twitter? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's Twitter. Tw- Twitter is headquartered there. Because they used to be yeah. down in Silicon yeah. Valley, but they didn't want to have to run the buses back and forth to take their people back and forth from San Francisco to work. So they came to join their people in San Francisco. And then all the people that were in Silicon Valley came up and flushed into San Francisco. And everybody raised their prices because these little semi-billionaires yeah. had the money for it. Yes, uh, yep. Renee. Patrick first. I'm after Patrick. Sorry. Oh, Patrick first. Patrick had his hand up first. Um, I was just going to say, like, for me, if I were to look for a different apartment mm-hmm. and I require a garage mm-hmm. so that I'm out of the element at some point, even though it's not attached, um, I'm looking at paying even more than what I pay now. And I don't get any disability benefit or anything like that for housing um, because I still work, you know, freelance and that sort of thing. And it's just amazing that even in Milwaukee, where I'm at, how expensive shit is and how expensive it, it's gotten over the years for housing. And I don't know how people manage. I'm paying nearly what I paid for my mortgage to live in a two-bedroom apartment. It just unfucking real. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. all I'm saying is, is that the gentrification in many ways is a terrible thing because where do the people who once used that as low cost housing go when that's no longer available to them? That's uh, right. Okay. So the issue with the Bay, San Francisco Bay Area, and you were talking about the fact that Twitter moved up there because Twitter couldn't get its people down there. And there's a huge bus problem where the employers are putting their people on, on charter buses and getting in the carpool lane and driving from San Francisco back into the valley. If the if we didn't if if the San Francisco Bay Area did not fail 40 or 60 years ago by getting Caltrain and looping an entire system around the Bay Area for mass transit, they wouldn't be in this problem. If the Bay Area would have put money into their mass transit, the corridor between San Francisco, San Jose, Gilroy, it wouldn't be like this. They're trying to do it now, and it's costing them up the butt. I was yeah. I was at a store one time and there was a lady just a little older than me and she said, "Oh gee, I was at the protest so that that Bart wouldn't go come on our side of the valley." And I almost flew over well, that. Wait a minute. Hold, hold on a second. <laughs> hold, hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. R- Renee, Renee, it's, wait, 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 it's the no. tech companies that have driven this uh, building well, boom. If, not if not uh, lack of transport. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me, is, let me. You no, know, it's lack of transportation. It is no, lack of transportation. No, sorry. We, yeah, oh, it, you're you're missing the whole. Sir, uh, I think Dubai. it's both. Wait, wait I minute. think Where's it's both. Dubai? Where is Dubai? Speak they should up, have. Please. They should have planned. They should have planned the transportation because of because of the tech. Well, you want to know something? I got to tell you something. Uh, and let's talk about lack of transportation. When they built BART, which is Bay Area Rapid Transit, for those who don't live in San Francisco, and we should let you know what they were talking about, uh, they built uh, uh, they built it everywhere except the only place they wouldn't allow it was Marin County. And you know yeah, something, Marin County, Marin, there was County a good reason for Marin County, Marin County has stayed kind of nice because of it. Yeah. But it doesn't. Well, so, but you're bitching about the buses when the buses didn't have to be there if they had high speed rail running from San Francisco down to Hollister. But because everybody sat on their asses, you don't have it. And I can't believe you people who have mass. So in the San Francisco Bay Area, we do not have one complete. Wait a minute! Loop. You just said we. You're living in Hawaii Sorry. now. They, yeah, they do not have one you, you were one of those you were one of those you were one of those cowards who moved out okay <laughs> and statewide texas politics was too now, okay? local for you yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well no i think i think that, look we talked about I, 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 no but, but no but no wait a minute i think the problem we're talking about is not just yes, marine yes, county yes. This is all over the country. I think everybody can yes. relate. Like uh, Patrick was relating it to his area. I mean, we're yeah. just talking about Marin yeah. County because that happens to be where Renee is from, and and John lives in Marin, and it's, and and, and, and Kevin's down it. in Hollister. But these, this is a generic. This problem goes on all over the country. 
And so, yeah. you what, know, yeah. where are the, but, where, uh, yeah. yeah. You look at any major yeah. metropolitan okay. city, whether it's yeah. here in the United States or on the other side of the planet, mm. and those mass transits link up. They're circular. They're circular with the feeders into the city for a freaking reason, because they know it works. But San Francisco, San Francisco Bay Area does not have one transit system that goes around, right. and I'm right. not okay. 200% sure that they yeah. don't okay. have to make okay. three Je changes. Jeff had his hand up a while back. You had something you wanted to say, Jeff. Yeah. Well, I used to go to the Bay Area all the time for business. And and the reason I, I went there is because they were trying to expand their products and 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 a lot of this stuff was new technology, new medical stuff, whatever. And it was a tremendous number of people moving in the area because of the jobs. And the jobs were also you got paid very well. But the problem was the transportation was lousy. Uh, when you had to go rent the place, it was very expensive and not very uh, modern, so to speak. <clears throat> but you kind of took over for that. Right. And they happen to be one of the places that still has tremendous number of jobs and well-paying jobs probably more per square foot than any else in the United States. And it's going to continue that way with that economy. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, 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 Tom. I just got to put in one thing in support of our transportation system. Please. Uh, I've actually got a great book here about the history of art uh, written by, by a guy who's well, you know, from the very beginning in, in the part of it. Uh, and the thing is that BART came very close to not being built. Oh, yeah. I heard three, this. Three counties had to, had to vote on it, and it came. the vote was very, very close. And can you imagine what would happen if BART had been defeated and in one of those counties? All it took would be one county to defeat yep. it. And the system would have been built. Can you imagine what Bay Area transportation would be like well, without BART today? Uh, well, I, I, I can. Uh, can you imagine what New York City would be without the subways? Exactly. You know? I mean, sure. it would be impossible. I would never it, leave my just, house ever. It would be like living in Texas. <laughs> yeah, and so this. <laughs> no, it, it wouldn't be like living in Texas because in Texas you can get from one place to another with a car. Here, you don't even yeah. want to own yeah. a car in Manhattan because it's senseless. It's just senseless. Yeah. Hey, uh, I just want to add one thing about this whole real estate thing. Uh, I've been really studying this issue because I'm involved in it with local politics. Almost 25%, 25% of real estate mm -hmm. in the hot spots, that's uh, Chicago, Boston, San Francisco, L.A., New York, uh, Florida, is 25% is foreign-owned. So they have turned the real estate in this country into an investment vehicle. And oh, that yeah. is adding and also to on the, the cost. Yeah, oh, yeah, just remember or the that. Ways, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, and, and hey, Alex. This, yeah. This, yes. I yeah. loved your pregame show there. The, the first half hour was excellent. Oh, with Larry Brought King? Back. I remember that show. Yeah. And I actually worked at the Berlin Game Cyclery when you, when you did that show. <laughs> 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 That was excellent. Yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was good, show. good if, show. If people Alex. didn't yeah, get yeah. to see it, you can always watch the rerun here after yeah, the show yeah. is over. I may not be on tomorrow night. I'm getting cut first thing in the morning. So You're getting cut? Luck. Cut for what? Oh, yeah. Good luck. Yeah, my knee. Your knee. Oh, okay. Well, lots, yeah. of, lots of luck with that. And we'll mm -hmm. yeah. keep out a good right. thought for yeah. you. Uh, uh, by the way, thank you, uh, Johnny, for being with us tonight. Right, yeah. you, you like the name Johnny, right? Uh, either way, it works. Yeah, uh, John Paluis, Paluis, excuse me, Tom Imaguchi. Uh, thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. Uh, Patrick, always nice to have you here. Renee, I'll, thank you so much. I always appreciate your calls, as do I, Jeff and Bree. Uh, say good night to everybody. Good night. Yeah, good night. and uh, mm -hmm. and the next time, turn your camera on so we can see. 
Dubai. Yeah, it's tough. It, I know it's tough. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, Kevin, again, lots oh, of luck. Right. Hey, everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye uh, so that uh, they can all see that you love them. Okay? All right. There goes our citizens panel for tonight. And my, hold on a second. I got to get my camera on. There, there. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. Look, look at Bree. He's got his hand going there. That's what we got to Bree tonight. Anyway, uh, thank you uh, very much, Bree. I appreciate it. Uh, let me see here. Let me get rid of the uh, citizen panel here, so the next show can use the uh, Skype lines. We should get like a couple of Skype lines, so we wouldn't have to just have one. Anyway, that's it for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. Stay tuned for the uh, intersection next with Jack and. Amy, who you just heard on our panel. Thank you, Amy, for having joined us. Uh, and uh, they will be on until mid, uh, until 1 o'clock in the morning when it's Connections. Tomorrow night at 9.30, Damien Chaplin takes to these uh, Gabnet airwaves. And then tomorrow night at 10. Uh, we're here, okay? See you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.